And welcome back to another episode of Underdog Podcast. So, today's episode, I want to dive into the truth about the military. And not that truth that the shit you might think of, of, oh yeah, well we know the wars are for this and the wars are for that. I'm talking about the truth of the average fucking person. I want to say average. The, the person that joins the military. And the shit that they go through. <laughs> to the scale. It is so fucked up. It's hilarious at the same time. So. My mindset before I joined the military. This is 2005. 2006. I joined 2006. Yeah. So. Before then my mindset of the military. I already had an idea. I was an army brat. Uh, born in, a, in <laughs> born on a military base, lived on military bases in this country and overseas. So it's kind of already in my in, embedded in my childhood. And one of the biggest things uh, the proponents of military life is well, travel. You get to see the world, in a sense, for free. But it's not really for free because you're going to work your ass off. So <laughs> you don't really get compensated as much as you think you as someone should. And the pay now is better than what it used to be. But the thing about the military is when you sign up. First and foremost, you can start with the propaganda that happens uh, outside the military. In the movies, uh, in the different advertisements you see on TV. I mean, think about it. They come to your high school, right? <laughs> tell you about the military, tell you all these different opportunities and stuff like that. They don't ever tell you the cons. And it's not that the cons outweigh the pros. It's that the cons <laughs> are a lot more and, and cut a lot deeper than people realize. The devil's in the details. Is that not the phrase that goes? Like, you got to pay attention to the details. Ironically, the military teaches you to pay attention to the details. <laughs> That's how fucked up it all is. So, when I joined, before I joined the military, obviously, 2006, 2001, 9-11 had happened. And I'm not one of those fucking people where I was like, oh, yeah, 9-11 is happening. Oh, man, I need to go out and protect my country. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm not that guy. <laughs> I always wanted to be a hero, but guess what? A hero just can be, you know, a person that saves a cat in a tree type shit. Like, <laughs> firefighter. Fire. You just helping out someone when you don't really have to help them out. Right? Hero. Anyways, 9-11 did not inspire me because, well, I, I take that back. It did, but not in the sense that, that what you think. It wasn't my patriotic duty. I didn't want to go fight. The Taliban or Al Qaeda or, or whatever fucking name that they come up with next, ISIS, anything else they want to throw at you, Saddam Hussein, right? For me, it was about getting to the truth or getting to the facts of the situation, rather. Because after 9 11, I was like, nah, I'm not buying this terrorist hijacked a plane and ran into some buildings. I'm not buying this, bro. Some just doesn't seem to add up. So I will watch a lot of military movies. I will watch a lot of different things. Uh, that's the thing too. Propaganda in the movies. If you have not looked up where American uh, films are modern day, you know, yeah, yeah, films, movies. Look up who was behind that. Who was a big influence upon up, up, uh, about that? Right, you're gonna see military. It's propaganda. Propaganda is warfare, psychological warfare. No one talks about it. We think of just warfare as guns and, and moving people, uh, moving people around, moving pieces on a board. It's just a psychological matter. So, Full Metal Jacket, right? It was a movie that I seen before I joined the military, and it was a movie I grew up watching as a kid. Ironically, I shouldn't say ironically. It's so wild that majority of the people that I've ever known that I met in the military have all at at least one point in time before they joined the military 
have watched a military movie. <laughs> and it's, I laugh because I remember uh, watching Full Metal Jacket and 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 seeing everybody get shipped off to Vietnam and stuff, and sitting there thinking, it, not even really thinking about that. Hey, these people are just regular people having regular jobs in the military, but yet at the end of the day, no matter what position you have in the military, you're still someone that has a gun in their hand and might have to kill somebody, quote unquote, for your country. And no one ever really thinks about that, right? Because those were just, some of them were just broadcasters. Was what's that movie that Robin Williams was in? Wake Up, uh, Good Morning Vietnam, or something like that? No, that was the thing he said. Because he was broadcasting a goddamn radio show, right? <laughs> As he's in the military. Which is, I laugh because I actually, I, I wanted to be in broadcasting. Obviously, I have a podcast now. But I wanted to be in broadcasting. Where the video editing, on the screen, off the screen. More, uh, at the time when I joined, I wanted to do something off the screen. And <laughs> thinking, you know, it's it's a more or less a safer job because you're not so called on the front lines, even though there's not really a front lines type of thing anymore. But you're like, oh, you're good. But we think about that movie, Full Metal Jacket, motherfucker still got blown up. You know, it's still getting shot at. Because uh, you want <laughs> you got to capture a video, you got to do editing, you got to do something, you got to be out there. But in a sense, everyone is out there. And I'll kind of touch on that later, how no matter what job you have in the military, your life is is threatened, whether directly or indirectly. Either way, your life is on the line. So my mindset going in before I joined the military was more or less that I'm here to make money. I'm here to travel the world. I'm here to kind of set my feet. And this is a good way for me to acquire different skills. Uh, you know, test myself to see the world. There was, those were the pros I was looking at. I told myself I'm not gonna get brainwashed. I'm not gonna get caught up in this bullshit. You know, I I, re- I don't really talk about this. Now I think about it, my friends and family, I never really talked about it. I never had no intentions on being, uh, no intentions. I never uh, cared about none of that military, government, patriotic shit. I never did. I never did. <laughs> Like, I was, you know, conspiracy theories, like, all that stupid term. Like, I've been that way my whole fucking life. Like, literally, since I was, like, five, six, like, as long as I can remember. I remember reading the Bible and questioning stuff. I remember just watching History Channel, watching a whole bunch of different things, and trying to find different questions or find different answers to the questions that nobody was really asking. But to sit there and to sign those papers and when you join the military everyone says that oh you know you join the military you signed on a dotted line you did this you know you said you allow yourself to be to do these uh for these things to happen to you or you put yourself in these situations and you are correct right i did it to myself the thing is though it's not like it was a a blatant obvious thing that i saw coming the one thing where I fucked up back when I joined the military was underestimating how fucked up the government actually is. Because it's its own separate corporate entity, right? And people that are just picked and put in place there and it's just a revolving machine, right? (laughs) They're all just cogs in the machine, everybody. Positions, titles, all these different things really mean nothing. Because we're all going along in this you know, a corporate machine. It's just business. It's just business. And I knew war was business. I knew war was for profit before I joined the military. That's why I didn't want to fight nobody. I didn't want to have to shoot no one because it's not my fucking, it's not my war. It's nobody's war, right? <laughs> Unless you care that much for a corporation. Now, if you see all this and you know all this and you still stand by the United States government corporation, that's fine. That's fine. But, not me. Not me. But, in a sense, you know, it's business. I knew what I wanted from them. I knew what I could get from them. I knew I knew I would be able to to get paid or be compensated, mentally, you know, for, 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 <laughs> for my time. 
I just didn't think it would be this bad. It didn't cross my mind because I allowed myself to be manipulated. I allowed myself to be played. Because I only thought in the sense of, hey, as long as I don't lose an arm or a leg, I'm good. The thing they don't tell you about the military is everyone dies. You either have a quick death or you have a slow death. Everyone dies. <laughs> and you can obviously say that, oh yeah, well, of course everybody dies. That's how life is. You can look up studies. People that are in the military age faster than their, you know, counterpart civilians. We age faster. When I join, the amount of stress that they put on you through basic training it's some, if we, we allow ourselves to get caught up in the physical aspect of things. Understand that the United States government understands the human mind, understands the human body, understands the human spirit. They understand how, the, how we work. We focus on the physical aspect of the body, but the military fucks people up psychologically. Think about it. You're standing there being yelled at in basic training. And you can't do shit about it. You're being put in the most disrespectful shit in your life. And you can't do shit about it. And then after that, it doesn't stop. It continues. It goes on and on and on. Imagine, you're a whole grown-ass adult. And you're being yelled at by a whole nother so-called grown-ass adult. Why? Because you were late. <laughs> And you say, oh, don't be late to your job. Yeah, of course you don't be late. Right? You try to be there on time. But you're going to have late days. There's so many factors that, that goes into play. You're going to have late days. And then when you're late consistently, it becomes a problem. But think about it. In the military, you get yelled at. In your civilian job, you can get yelled at as well. But you can also file a lawsuit. You can do all these different things. You can, you can come back at, the, at that entity. In the military, there's channels, but it doesn't mean shit. <laughs> Your commander want to yell at you and cuss you out? Oh, they might get in trouble, but that's about it. You're still going to get the shit that you're getting. <laughs> Nobody really talks about this, man. Nobody talks about it. They're like, all my friends... Family members, people I've known that have been in the military, everybody has something fucking wrong with them. No one walks away the exact same manner in which they were when they fucking joined. And you can say, oh, well, that's because, you know, you're putting your body through this. You're putting... It's not just that. We allow ourselves to be experimented on. So when they say they, you sign that dotted line, you sign... You know, what you sign is two fucking lines you agree to. I'll protect and defend the Constitution of the United States of America against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Bam! That's it. <laughs> and, I will, and, I, and, and I will follow the orders of, of the President of the United States. That's it. That's it. I look, every few years, I look over my contract. I have to remind myself, like, yes. That's it. Two fucking lines. Two fucking lines. Typed up. The rest of the shit is just, is, is just you putting down information and some other stuff. But that's the main thing we're talking about there. When you think about it, it's nothing. Because, of course, you, you're under the military. Uh, the, the commander-in-chief is the president of the United States, is in charge of the military, a civilian manner, the way they set up the, uh, the Constitution or the United States government, blah, blah, stupid shit. You get it, right? It makes sense. But at the same time, you would not do that in the typical world of business. If I'm an athlete signing a contract, I wouldn't sign that fucking contract, right? <laughs> if you're a C, if you're a, a new or uh, are, are coming on as a CEO or maybe a director of a movie, are you overseeing an institution? You wouldn't sign that contract because it's too vague. That's why you see those terms of agreements be lengthy as fuck because you have to write every fucking thing out in detail when you're doing contracts. Because if you just agree to such a vague, generic statement, that applies to any fucking thing. 
So doing that basically saying, you know, you sign a contract, you're saying you follow the orders, and here's a penalty of it. So that's what it gets you. The penalty <laughs> is what fucks you up. Because not only can they just throw you in prison, they'll take your money away, then throw you in prison. And then people will go to jail over things, drugs, stuff like that. And they've been knocked out of rank. Been in jail for like 30 days and then get kicked out. So they make you go broke, <laughs> lock you up, <laughs> and then kick you out. And then say, hey, go try to find a job after we don't fucking stain your public record. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's so spiteful. It's so dis disrespectful. It's so fucked up. They don't talk about this, man. They won't tell you this because if they actually told you this, less people will be applying. They tell you, uh, when I was in, it was like, oh, 1% of the of the U.S. population joins military. And they try to say that's a top 1%. No, 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 no. Because everybody joined the military, <laughs> we all running from something. Are we trying to get away? Are we trying to... To see the world, we're trying to do something. Everybody has their reasons. But at the end of the day, it's money. It's money. It's job security. I'm not going to lie. I probably wouldn't be able to get my, my own place that quick. If I wasn't in the military. <laughs> so those are the pros, but the cons run deep. And I hate to admit the pros, but I didn't realize the cons is going to be like this. So, to kind of switch gears, think of, think about deployments, right? If I tell you I deployed to Afghanistan as an Air Force member, you, you'll say, oh, well, oh, you're in the Air Force, so you're good. You're good. Why? Because you're fucking brainwashed, right? Don't worry. You're an idiot. I'm an idiot. We're all idiots. Everybody is capable of being brainwashed, and we all have been brainwashed. Mainly because <laughs> we're too trusting. We're too naive. We we think you know we think nobody there's no reason for anybody to do this to us. Yes, there is plenty of reasons. Billions, if not trillions of dollars, are on the line, right? War is about resources, but we'll get into that later as well. So, damn, I just lost my train of thought. I just thought about it. Fuck me, fuck me, fuck me. Let's see, can I get it back? Can I get it back? Uh, here we go. So. As far as like how the military goes, if you don't follow an order from an NCO, that's a penalty. They can lock you up for that. Due relation of duty, being late it violates the UCMJ, the United military code of justice something that all branches of the military go under anal sex is against the ucmj you you want to know how fucked up shit is go over the ucmj uh, laws or code ethics where you want to call them go over that shit <laughs> that's how fucked up it is the most fucked up thing about the military is that you have no private life. You have no private life. Your life is that of the government. No one, I want to say no one, but for the most part, yeah, <laughs> there's nothing that no one can, you know, cannot know about you. When it comes to your superiors, your, your NCOs, your senior NCOs, uh, you know, your officers that, that are around, your commanders, your, your physician team, like everybody knows shit about you. Like, <laughs> you got to tell them if you're sexually active, right? You, you got to let them know uh, who's in your household. Yo, you're married? Okay, cool. That's why I, I thought I thought it was interesting when uh when, when they you know repel the don't say or don't say don't don't ask don't tell whatever thing in the military. It was all like you being gay in the military was always a thing. It, the only thing was if marriage wasn't legal federally, then that means 
you can get the the, the so-called uh, benefits that you would get as a you know military spouse if you're in a same-sex marriage. Tricare health benefits that's pretty much about all you get. And it's some there's some other little programs things like that, but it's it's not worth it's not like it's worth anything. To be honest, it's not like it's worth anything. But so here's here, here's an example. Here's an example, and I know other military, other veterans can speak to this. This is how fucked up the military is. What goes on in your household goes on in your household. When you're in your civilian life, your civilian job, no one gives a fuck, right? Oh, you got shit going on at home. That's cool. Uh, you're at work now. Nobody gives nobody gives a shit. Do your job. Do your job. The military says no, 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 no. You're a military member, twenty four seven. Active duty. I guess this mainly goes into active duty because guard and reserve, uh, slightly different. I have friends that are, are in are in those units and they don't seem to say as of being in the military. Although, I mean, I'm sure you can argue to some of some point as well though that that, that is still kind of an issue of privacy and stuff, but. For the most part, I'm speaking mainly of active duty. So, you being on active duty, you being stationed at a base, whether stateside or overseas, now you're married. You have some issues going on at home in your household. You happen to tell, you know, somebody at work. You tell one of your friends. Because in the military, on active duty, guess what? The people that you work with are your friends. I know people that be like, hey, I don't hang out with nobody that I work with. Or they don't hang out with no military members at all. That's interesting. I understand that perspective as well. It's kind of hard, though. <laughs> it's kind of hard because I used to spend most of my life at work. For 12 years, I spent most of my life at work. And my kids. Have been with me at work as well. <laughs> like, <laughs> my ex-wife has been with me at work. Like you spend a lot of time at work because it's your fucking life. It's your life. The military becomes your fucking life. There are no days off. There's only leave of absence. There are no days off. You can always be called up to do something at any given fucking moment. Right? That, that's another con that starts to fuck with your head psychologically at the point. He's like, oh, I, I, there's plenty of times where I've been on leave and people still text me some dumb shit. Ask me about shit that I don't give a fuck about. Ask me about shit that I already talked to him about before I left. It's like, hey, why are you bothering me? I'm on leave. Oh, yeah, well, you, we still need to do this. We still need that. And, you know, it's like, God damn, man. I've I never seen so many self-centered, selfish assholes in my life. <laughs> You talking about the corporate world is dangerous. Government is military is corporate world, man. So many people that would throw you on the fucking bus. So many snakes. What Jay Z said? I had to cut the grass short so the snakes would show. <laughs> They're fucking everywhere. But go back to my scenario. You have you know issues going on in your household. You tell somebody at work, or you. Report it to your supervisor because you're supposed to tell your supervisor those things and stuff and let them know what's going on because this is all incorporating the you know the warrior spirit the the and making sure that your mental health is good and stuff and your mental health if it's, if your mental health is affected then it's gonna affect how you are at work and blah blah, blah. and to a degree it, that's 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 factual to to a degree that is correct it's spin off as benevolent but it's it's really control <laughs> it's really control there's really some malicious intent behind it because it's part of that military corporate machine right war is business so this is how you keep your employees in line a checks and balance system amongst the employees themselves right the 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 younger grade is being looked at by the older grade that's why they have a grade system. <laughs> and everyone is looking at another person. All the way up the chain of command. Everybody's looking at another person. Everyone is always being looked at by someone else. Whether it's their peer or, or someone above them in the hierarchy. 
Sometimes it could be a, a subordinate. A subordinate can call out their superior. But they better be damn right about it. <laughs> See, like, you always have to be on your, I hate this thing, but on your P's and Q's. Like, you always have to be on your shit. Because if not, you could just be walking. There's, there's been times where I've just been walking. Walking. And someone try to check me on some shit. And it's like, you get the fuck out of here, bro. Nobody got time for this shit, man. I'm not doing your shit today, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I remember walking up the steps to my squadron headquarters building and I remember uh, um, who I was walking in I was oh I was walking in around the same time my first sergeant if you know what the first sergeant is it's like the person that is like a fuck it, it's like the, almost like a general manager type position of the squadron and stuff where they kind of they they work outside of the chain of command, but they're still a part of the chain of command. It's kind of hard to explain. Uh, think about it. I gotta find some way, better way to compare that. But I remember walking up the steps, and I remember in front, coming down the steps, I seen this officer. I think it was like a probably like a first lieutenant. Yeah, I think it was, I think it was Silver Bar. I think it was like a first lieutenant. And my mind was like, fuck, fuck. See. Regular people are like, oh, what's so big a deal about that? No, I have to salute this motherfucker. I, I, I always felt like saluting was the most degrading thing ever. Because I'm only saluting a motherfucker that's an officer. Why? <laughs> Just because that's part of the military structure. Do they actually deserve my respect? No more than anyone else. But I have to salute them. See, I have a hard time with respecting authority. Which is interesting that I even joined the military because I don't recognize authority i don't recognize authority like it, it, to me there are there is no authority other than myself i make whatever decisions i want to like nobody needs to tell i don't i don't look for morality i don't look for values and structure i don't look for someone telling me what's right or wrong because i can figure that shit out myself because i'm the one i have to live with my own decisions so why do i need someone to tell me that so i don't recognize that shit so respect so saluting somebody annoyed the fuck out of me but the same, sometimes I used to just I used to have fun with it because I know some of the officers actually most of the officers probably hated that shit too or at least most of the officers that I encountered so that shit always made me funny because I'm like ha 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 this is hilarious I <laughs> sometimes like, you see officers try to duck across the street real fast because they don't have to salute nobody because it's such an inconvenience and it's unnecessary but you know it's part of the brainwashing, manipulative, manipulative manner of the military. So, as this officer is walking down, I'm looking up. I'm like, all right, I'm going to have to salute him. But I'm not going to just salute a motherfucker. And they don't recognize that I'm saluting him and salute me back. Now, it's already fucked up. I'm playing this stupid-ass game. But, you know, they keep giving me a paycheck, so I keep showing up. But, but... I'm not going to play this stupid ass game by myself. Now, if I go to salute and the motherfucker don't salute me back, now we have a fucking problem. Now we have a fucking problem because I allow myself to, to succumb to this shit that I don't agree with. Right? I'm already mad at myself for, for allowing myself to be played. But you telling me this other fucking person is just going to ignore me altogether and not get in trouble, not nothing? So... I'm looking at this person, this officer, and then they never even acknowledged me. They never looked up to make eye contact. Head was down the whole entire time. So I didn't salute. I just looked at him. I'm like, what? I just I just looked at the, 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 this officer the whole entire time. Like, this motherfucker. I can't believe this. And then the, the first sergeant next to me, uh, after the officer went by, the first sergeant was like, Sergeant Jackson, what's, what's wrong with you? You, why you salute him? I was like, what? I was like, did you not see his ass? <laughs> so I started to go off. I was like, there's no way. I was like, he ain't trying to acknowledge me. No, I'm not. You want me to salute? He ain't trying to acknowledge me. He's like, Sergeant Jackson, come on. I know you're better than that. You, you know, and this this first sergeant had a good rapport with me because I helped him out in a certain situation and stuff and, and whatnot. So he respected me. And I respected this first sergeant too because he was there to help me when I was going through a rough time in my marriage at the time. Like, he was there. So I, I can't knock this person. Like, I respect him and he respects me. But <laughs> this is where we degree, uh, disagree at. Because 
I'm like, no, I'm not gonna salute. I was like, I'm not gonna salute this dude if he's not look at me. I look fucking stupid. Like that's dumb. And he was like, sorry, Jack, you better now. You gotta do it. You know, blah blah. You, cause you went ahead and did it. I would have gone to that officer for it. I was like, all right, all right. I was like, okay. I respected him and I respected his perspective and his point of view where he was coming from. And I know he he was just being a cogging machine, going along with it. And my mind's like, all right, I get it. Instead, what I'm going to do from now, at that point, I was like, I'm just going to fuck with every fucking officer that I see. <laughs> I'm going to make sure motherfuckers salute me. And even if they, even if they don't, even if they don't, I'm just going to stand there and look fucking stupid. I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit because it's now y'all pissing me off. So now I'm going to be extremely fucking petty. But it's those type of things. It's those type of things. Right? You're constantly being judged. You're constantly being watched. Now go back to the, the scenario, you know, the, the the spouse in the household. You go, okay, I feel like I keep jumping off of it. But you, you have issues. You go to work with those issues. Somebody at work finds out that, hey, you're being late because you can't sleep at night because you're arguing with your spouse or, or shit and this and that going on. Next thing you know, knocks are on the door. And they're like, hey, hey, sorry, Jackson. Uh, you know, are you home? Uh, we're looking for you. You didn't answer your phone motherfuckers come to your house man and then i lived on base and people always told me like hey don't live on base because they'll just pop up at your house and i was like eh, nobody finna do that shit for my first fucking base i lived <laughs> i lived on base guess what motherfuckers came knocking on my door why because i needed to go to a piss test even though i had already left work because i was sick i was legit sick and i was cooking i was in the, uh, the kitchen you can't be around for food sick you can't be Anywhere, I don't, anybody's sick anymore, I guess, but I was legit home for a fucking reason, Go, like, going through some shit, I think I probably had the flu, I probably just, actually, I probably just got the flu shot, I just got the flu shot, and then I had the flu, just saying, but anyways, I just fucking, that shit happened to me. And I remember knocking on the door. Oh, oh yeah, we need you to take this piss test and blah, blah. I was like, what? It's like, yeah, yeah, you, you got the notification, but you never went up there. I was like, yeah. I already knew the rules of it, right? I already knew the, the we, what happens in that process. I know if I get a notification and stuff, and I, it, it means nothing until I actually go up there. Once I go up there and, and sit down to take the piss test, then I'm stuck there. But long as I don't actually go up there and stuff and sign the paper and turn that shit in, I'm good. I you it's one thing to get notified, it's another thing to go up there. So I already knew this. These motherfuckers try to get me in trouble over it. <laughs> they try to write a paperwork. Uh, L O C L O R something like that. Letter of counseling, letter of reprimand. It's those things, it's just little red marks on your file. And you think, oh, that means nothing until you try to apply for a certain job. You want to cross train to another career field. If you want to, hell, you want to go on deployment. You want to do anything. You pack up enough of that so-called paperwork, those red marks on your file. Guess what? They'll start knocking your pay away. I done seen friends get their fucking stripes taken away, get knocked down and pay and then get kicked out. Over some shit that wasn't that fucking serious, but they just needed fucking help. Actually, now I think about it. <laughs> In the military doesn't help nobody. When you're fucked up, you're fucked up. Now, some that do get help is usually because they know somebody and somebody knows somebody and they help them out. But uh, on my way out of the military, hey, I knew a lot of people. I still couldn't get help. <laughs> I still couldn't get help. Which goes into what I really want to emphasize on. how, how the, the truth about the military, how they really fuck people up. Is deployment. When you deploy overseas, you put yourself into an environment in which no other American will live through. And when I'm not, I'm not just talking about obviously the the hostile firing, or right, whether it's mortars, uh, uh, you know, just um. 50 cows or, or just regular gunfire and stuff like that, hearing different explosions. I'm not talking just about that, although that's fucked up in his own. I'm talking about a thing that they rarely talk about. 
that they're starting to talk about now. Even though they're like 20 plus years late. Almost 30 years late, actually. Is that of fucking burn pits. Toxins. The chemicals. I didn't even realize. I thought Agent Orange was a fucking chemical warfare weapon. I could have sworn Agent Orange was a chemical warfare weapon. I don't know if I jump reality. I don't know what the fuck is going on. But I could have sworn that's what it was. Or maybe they just always lied about what it was. Because the same things that make Agent Orange or those toxins and stuff like that. is the same thing that's being still put out there overseas in military bases. You can do the research if you're so curious. Look up burn pits. Look up toxins. Poison. It goes back to what I was saying before. You either have a quick death or a slow death as a military member, as a veteran. And it goes back to what I was saying, talking about active duty. But if you're Guard Reserve and you're deploying overseas, you're being exposed to the same thing. When I first joined, I remember going down a line and just getting hit with shot after shot after shot. And I remember my first thought was, oh my fucking God. We're just cattle. We're just cattle. And like I said, I knew these things. But to see it firsthand and to see the death and see how fucked up it is. They don't even tell you. They, I tell you that back. They'll tell you slightly what they're putting into your body. But it's right then and there. It's not like you get a, a, a bunch of forms. It's not like you get a bunch of things and you're really sitting down and discussing what you're putting into your body. It's just shot, 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 shot. <laughs> yeah, shot in my ass, bro. <laughs> Come on, man. I mean, I got shot. My, I had to pull down my pants. It's not like I, I went off somewhere. I, mean, I was just in line with a bunch of other dudes. I had to pull down my pants and get shot in the ass. I don't remember them like there was like no curtain up or anything. I just get shot in the ass. I remember when I pulled down my pants, the lady looked at my ass. This literally happened. This literally happened. I had pulled down my pants. The lady looked at my ass and she said, ooh, ooh, baby, I'm sorry. This going to hurt. You don't shut the fuck up. Leave my ass alone. <laughs> I know I got that much ass, bro. I know I lost fucking weight since I've been here. I'm 5'8", 117. I know what the fuck is going on. It's not good. You'll just do your goddamn job. Nobody need no extra commentary. <laughs> so I just remember thinking that like, oh shit. She got jokes as she sticks this fucking needle in my ass. And then don't worry because that's just the first one. Next thing you know, bam, one in your right arm. Bam, one in your left arm. So now the next day, your left arm, your left shoulder is sore. Your right shoulder is sore. And now your ass is sore. <laughs> <laughs> come on man they don't tell you that shit man they don't tell you and that's funny and you can see some of the stuff like that maybe in some basic training video stuff like that but here's a more or here's the most fucked up thing about it the, the your body is your body's chemistry is literally being taken over and messed up you look into mRNAs. We know what vaccines can do to the DNA of the body. So I got all these different vaccinations, 20 plus different vaccinations. I had chicken pox when I was a kid. They still made me get chicken pox vaccination, right? Because I went to Korea, I had to get a smallpox vaccination. You're talking about fucking monkey pox? Oh, we got to get a smallpox. I already got that shit. I already got that shit. And guess what? That vaccination is going to be passed on to my children. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I fucked them up. Sorry. So you so you have that shit. I've, I've taken anthrax. I have taken uh, polio vaccines. Uh, the I have, have ingested malaria drugs, which is fucking little pills that they give you when you go overseas. You know, because you got to take these. You got to take these. Even though when you take them, they make you feel sick as fuck. They make you feel nauseous. And one of the first things I noticed when I was over there, and they told me too, before we landed... And then the train before we went over to Afghanistan. It's like, you know, it's going to smell funny, but you get used to the smell. And remember I got off that plane and I smelt the air? I was like, oh my God, this shit is, what the fuck is going on? I remember being outside one time. And I think I was down south at Camp Bastion, which got renamed to some other shit. I don't even fucking know. 
I forget what or I forget the name rather. But I remember being outside because I was working in the storeroom. And it's kind of touched back on what I was saying earlier. If I said I was in the Air Force going to Afghanistan, you'd be like, whatever. Because you, when you think of being deployed, you think of being shot at and stuff like that and, and, and all those other things. You don't think about the people that just operate the base, the people that are, are setting up the base, people that are feeding people, the people that are doing the medical, the people that are, all these other regular ass fucking jobs. That's really what the military comes down to operations and support. I just worked in a support career field. At the end of the day, everybody has a gun in their fucking hand. Because if I told you that I was a that I was an army member and I was part of the special forces first special forces group and I went overseas and deployed in Afghanistan, you'll think of me differently. Because that's what I did. I did army training and then I was deployed with the first special forces group. <laughs> <laughs> and I was with special forces the whole fucking entire time I was there. So I had my vest on. Kevlar helmet. M4. With a red dye. 9 mm on my waist. <laughs> that was my shit when I pulled guard duty. And when I wasn't pulling guard duty, I had a 9 mm on my waist all the time. So now I'm in the kitchen cutting up shit or telling the Afghans the locals to do this shit yelling at they dumb ass sometimes they're fucking acting stupid right and that's not me that's not racist that's not nothing that, that's just facts they got on my fucking nerves being fucking stupid <laughs> they didn't give a fuck it was easy money for them they knew they understood what the situation was going on so as i tell you all this it, it doesn't click for some people's heads because the propaganda they feed us on on these movies and shit ain't real man it ain't real so go back to what I was saying. I was outside. I was working in the storeroom. So <laughs> the storeroom, as I say, I was working in the storeroom. There is no fucking room. <laughs> it's just me outside in some hot ass Connex boxes, or or which are what kind of like shipping container units, pretty much, and putting the food into that. I'm looking at food that doesn't expire for like five years. Protein shakes that doesn't expire. Milk that doesn't expire for five years. Where the fuck? You will not buy no milk that doesn't expire for five years. But yet, this is what we're ingesting into our bodies. So, it's the shots. It's the vaccination. It's, it's, it's the toxins in the air and shit. It's the shit that you're fucking eating. Are you actually eating food? The country didn't, you know, they're, they're Islamic, right? They don't eat pork. Where the fuck was the bacon coming from? Oh, the bacon was crossing the border from the Pakistan. Uh, yeah, from, yeah. At the Pakistani border. Nah. I mean, we went a month or so without bacon. Everybody was freaking out. I'm just like, this is what y'all worried about? That there's no fucking bacon? Y'all should be wondering where the fuck is the pork coming from? <laughs> there's, there's times where I open up a, a container from a, a food delivery. Because I made, I, made, I made the purchases and the delivery orders and stuff for the food. There were times where I opened that shit up. And it will be so rotten, I have to throw the majority of the shit away. And it got so bad to the point where after a couple of shipments, we got low on our on our food supply. And I, and I wasn't encouraged, but even I knew, I'm like, ah, oh, shit, at some point in time, I'm going to have to make a choice whether we eat this shit that's questionable or not have nothing to eat at all. Right? Because... My job is nothing. It's not that serious. Food is not that important until someone gets fucking sick. Now, next thing I know, I'm in trouble and I'm fucking being locked up. <laughs> it's the mind fuck that goes on. But anyways, so I'm outside. I'm, I'm working. I'm, I'm on the forklift. I'm doing all this other stuff. I remember just sitting there, just taking a break and just looking up and just seeing this big ass mushroom cloud and just seeing how things were like, oh, uh. Oh, I'm just like, oh, okay. It's another explosion. I, I think they're testing something. They just, they, they blew up something. Or they dropped something. Or maybe somebody dropped somewhere. Or somebody dropped something on us. I don't fucking know. I mean, it's a day in life <laughs> while you're over there. You're just going to see shit. <laughs> you're going to see explosions. You're going to hear explosions. You, you just go about it. But I remember just being outside and seeing the mushroom cloud. And and later on, just, I remember just smelling something, and I remember just thinking, damn, I'm pretty sure inhaling this shit 
is is probably the worst fucking thing that we could be doing. I never forget. I just had that thought, and it wasn't just at a particular moment. I had that thought plenty of times. Just sitting there thinking, like, I don't think it's healthy for us to be standing out here or we walking around inhaling this shit. None of this seems like it should be going into our bodies. I don't think we should be eating this food. In fact, why am I getting all these fucking shots? Now, by the time I came to these conclusions, it was already too late. Because by the time I got back from Afghanistan, my body was already fastly deteriorating from the inside out. (laughs) You either have a quick death or you have a slow death. One way or another. And to be honest with you, it goes to a lot of you know, psychological factors, environmental factors, genetic factors. Uh, just a lot of things go into you know, how your body's going to react to these things. They know it's a percentage game. They know that they will use your body. Now here where it gets even more fucked up. Because the American population has been misled and they've been lied to and been brainwashed to think that, oh, well, don't worry, you'll be taken care of. No, you won't, because you have to fight for that. I got a separation check when I got out of the military, right, because I was involuntarily separated. I did an episode about it before. Shit, I don't remember the name of the episode. It was like four hours long, though. I don't remember the name of the episode, now I think about it. But anyways, I, I, I was involuntarily separated, so I got a, mil- so I got a separation paycheck. When I signed for that separation paycheck, I had to sign, and the only way I could get to keep that money is if I didn't apply for VA disability benefits. I signed a form where it stated, if, if I go to the VA and I receive compensation, doesn't matter how much I receive, 10%, 10% comes out to like $20. If I receive some type of compensation for VA or from VA for disability, I would have to pay back that separation paycheck. And it's not like it's a window. It's for the rest of your life. So at any given moment, say 5, 10, 15 years down the line, something happens to you and you want to apply for VA disability benefits, for some type of financial compensation, for the work that you've done, for the risk that you put your body, your life on the fucking line, you have to pay that money back. That's how fucked up this all is. Because the real fucked up thing, the real truth about the military, you don't have to look at the beginning. You can, you don't even have to look at what goes on while you're in it, or while people are in it. You can look at how they're treated once they're out. The real fucked up thing is veterans the va the veterans affairs department that is the most fucked up thing their hospital their treatment sucks their shit sucks and here what here's what's so fucked up about it it's still military members doing it to other military members right cogs in the machine fucking npcs everybody's going along doing the same thing because they're only concerned about themselves I never met the most selfish, self-centered asshole people in my life until I joined the military. Until I put myself around these type of people. It's so fucked up. Look up MK Ultra. Look into the, you know, the government and how they understand how to brainwash, manipulate people. Every training that I ever had in the military was brainwashing. I remember walking out of different classes, different training, and just standing there and just like, I can't believe these motherfuckers really try to brainwash me. And I remember talking to other people and be like, hey, they really just try to brainwash us. And some people were like, eh. And some people were like, yep. <laughs> and it's like, wow. They call it training, but you're trying to brainwash me. My supervisory training, and guess what? My supervisory training is the same training that they give out to supervisors or managers at Fortune 500 companies, your Verizons, your, your Googles, your, your you know, Apples, all this type of shit. It's the same training. 
it's how to brainwash people. It's how to manipulate people to get them to do things for the company, for the corporation, regardless, regardless if they agree with it or not. It's so fucked up. And yet, so fucking brilliant. It really is brilliant. It, it's really brilliant. And I can go on forever about this shit. I'm sure I'm, I know I'm missing some other points, but... Man, the, 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 it's, the devil's in the details, right? All the submersive things that, and, and things that subconsciously affect you in the military. It's, it's really the psychological stuff. Being told where you can be at. Being told when you... I wanted to cross train into a different career field. Excuse me. I had to wait. I signed a six-year contract when I first joined. I had to... I spent at least five years of that contract in this one particular career field. Unless I found other loopholes, other different ways to get out of that career field. I learned so much about the government and how the world really works from the military. I learned that everything is just business. Because as I'm in Afghanistan, my first thought is, hey, why am I eating Popeye's chicken over here? Oh, 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 no, don't worry. It's only because, oh, you know, they have a contract with the government. I didn't know that contract extended all the way over to Afghanistan. Oh, or is this U.S. property or U.S. territory over here in Afghanistan? Or, wait a minute, if it's U.S. territory, then why are the Japanese here? Why are the Egyptians here? Why are the Australians here? Why are, why are the Brits here? Right? Whoa, 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 whoa. Why are so many people in this one fucking country? Uh, what the fuck is going on? I've been to South Korea. I've been in the, 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 the demilitarized zone. I've been at the line of the border. I looked over and seen the North Koreans. So, a soldier just fucking standing back, look at me, or standing there looking back at me. Something just doesn't add up about all this. It's not just about, you know, uh, Oh, we care about freedom or democracy. Those are bullshit ideologies. It's about business. It's about money. It's about resources. It's about power. It's about, it's about taking it over those certain things. But Americans, and I'm sure this happens in other countries because by design, the military is not what you think. There's no, I remember going over, I remember in training right before we went over to Afghanistan, is pre-deployment training. I remember them telling us, hey, we're not at war. There are no official wars. Only Congress can declare war. That's why you hear Bush talk about a war on terrorism. Was What the fuck does that mean? Once again, it's those vague and generic terms. It's those vague and generic explanations that leaves them open to do whatever the fuck they want to do. War on terrorism means where the fuck terrorism we desc- the you know describe as what's terrorism anything that causes terror or anyone or any entity or any fucking thing we feel like labeling that as a terrorist we can do whatever the fuck we want as far as the US government corporation goes and its allies that back them up it's just a fucked up thing because there's a whole different game being played and people don't know about this and I'm glad I joined the military because part of the reasons why I joined the military was to find this shit out. I needed to see it firsthand. I just underestimated how fucked up this all really was. I fucked up. I fucked up. Now I got to deal with lifelong fucking issues. Now I'm watching my friends deal with lifelong fucking issues. Because the misconception is, oh, well, you didn't deploy overseas, so you're fine. Or, oh, well, you know, you was only in for a couple of years, so you're fine. No, no, no. It starts in basic training. People die in basic training. When I was in basic training, people fucking die. That Texas weather, that Texas heat, people die. Because you don't, they don't do no real health screening. It's just a generic glance over. They don't really look into your genetics. They don't really look into your body. Because they don't give a fuck. Because once you sign up, you're either going to die a quick death, or you're going to die a slow death. 
either way, you cut your lifespan down. You know, I shouldn't say you cut your lifespan down. You cut your quality of life down. Now, granted, most of you fucking Americans and people around the world are already cutting your quality of life down by your own choices. But, hey, it is what it is. And like I said, you can easily argue that, hey, everyone that joins the military, they did it to themselves. And you're correct. You're correct. I'm not arguing against that. I'm just trying to expose the reality of the situation. Because some veterans don't really talk about it. Because, you know, part of the brainwashing is to be to get a kick out of the fact that you're a veteran. Because you know that you've done things that most people don't have the mental fortitude to handle. To, to handle it. So that person that you can you can laugh at or be like, oh, this person only spent one year in the military and they got a ha ha ha. Doesn't matter. Did more than you. Did more than a regular motherfucker. Could you even handle that? Could you even make it past that? Granted, a lot of people don't realize that you can make a pat you can make past a lot of things. You can push through a lot of things once you're tested and once you put yourself through it. You just don't know. So you get a sense of confidence going through that training because you know you're doing something that shit you didn't you know you just didn't like prepare really prepare for it. You just went off of your mental fortitude, your mental toughness. But you also will be mentally broken. The train in basic training uh, the methodology, the, the the brainwashing and manipulation that goes on is all done by design and it's designed to break you down. It's designed, they told us this in basic training, it's designed to strip you of your morals, your values, and all those other things to strip you of that and build you up in a manner in which the morals and values and ethics and code of that particular branch is written under. Mainly, well, it's, they all pretty much have the same ideology anyway. It's just all, like like I said, United Military, a Uniform Military Code of Justice. So, the, the same laws or whatever code applies to everybody. But that that that's the level of brainwashing that goes on. Everybody's a little different. No, but nobody talks about a sniper being a serial killer. Right? No one talks about that. No one talks about, oh, oh, you're in infantry? Oh, man, man, you got a tough job, blah, blah. No one talks about, hey, maybe you're just a killer and you like to kill people. And this is a way for you to, you know, live out those, those, those feelings. Don't get it twisted. I still joined the military. Part of me wanted to, you know, run around with a gun and shoot people. Why? Well, Propaganda. Because they make that shit look cool in the movies, don't they? They make it seem like it's action packed and it's something and it makes you feel like you're living. It makes you feel like you're living. I'm not gonna lie to you. There's not those nights where I've been woken up because of explosions and, and people screaming or, or hearing gunfire while I'm at work and stuff. I'm not gonna lie to you. Oh, it makes you feel alive. <laughs> it makes you feel alive. <laughs> You're sitting there walking, mind your own business, and you know, all of a sudden you hear the alarm and you see people ducking to the ground and shit. <laughs> it makes you feel alive, but it also makes you feel numb to life. It also makes you feel like, ah, fuck it, who cares? Flip up a coin, I guess I didn't die today. Because the one last point I want to make is the indirect attack, or the, those indirect uh, negative effects and those uh, direct negative effects. You can be affected directly through the military, psychologically, mentally, emotionally, physically, and you can also be affected indirectly in different manners. You're overseas, you're getting shot at, you can be shot at directly or you can be shot at indirectly. And you say, oh, it's nothing. I re you know, at that point, it's only preference. Because do you want to be in a mass shooting or do you want to be killed by someone that you know? Or do you want to be killed by someone that will look at you first. <laughs> it's like pick your poison type of thing. Because that's all it is. It's just different perspectives of it. But at the end of the day, it doesn't uh, negate the fact that it's all fucked up. It's all fucked up. Like we really need to look at this military shit. And it, believe me, the conversation that you get from the military while on active duty, while on guard or reserve, while uh, while being a veteran, 
It's not. It's nowhere near enough. It's nowhere near enough. It's, it's nowhere fucking near enough. You think your taxpayer dollars are going to pay their salaries? <laughs> They're getting the crumbs. Right? We're getting the fucking crumbs. This whole military shit that they like to sell us and stuff. Oh, protect the military. Oh, we love our troops. Oh, oh this and that. Oh, man, well, our military is doing this. They're out there, you know, having, you know, c- conducting in, in wars and blood for oil and blah, blah. Just part of the game. It's just part of the game, man. It's just part of the game. It's part of the game called life and it's called collecting resources. And it's called utilizing your different assets to collect those resources. Because guess what? An employee is an asset. You being a military member, you're an asset. And then letting you know they really don't value that much as an asset. Uh, you think the planes that they work on, they fly and stuff and different things like that, those shits break down all the time. Those planes are old. But don't worry. They got the high tech shit somewhere. They got the they got the good shit somewhere. I've been down to missile castles where you, you see on TV and old movie stuff where they got to turn the keys to launch the nuclear weapons. Oh, yeah. But that's just the shit that they want regular people to know about and people with secret clearance to know about. But there's top secret clearance and then there's clearances above top secret. There's shit out there that you, you probably can't even wrap your fucking head around. And they're hidden in plain sight. You be on the road and you just see something where it's like, it's just a big ass field, a bunch of trees, and you'll see a fence and you'll see a sign that says keep out government property or keep out property of the U.S. government or keep out property of the U.S. military, U.S. Air Force, U.S. Army. Where y'all think the fucking internet came from? Where you think GPS technology came from? Touchscreen phones. A lot of this shit was developed privately in private sectors for military applications because war is business. That's what it's about. War is business. The fuck? How do you think a company like Lockheed Martin exists? And guess what Lockheed Martin likes to do? Hire veterans? Because <laughs> I, I, I looked into fucking trying, thinking about getting a job there. <laughs> like... <laughs> Shit, that's the other myth too, but I think I need to do a whole separate episode. The myth that veterans are taken care of once they're done and they return back to civilian and then everybody wants to hire a veteran. Nobody wants to hire a veteran. Why? Because we're all fucking crazy. <laughs> we all got If I got issues, man, I am hyper aggressive, man. I'm always, I, I, I love, I don't want to say I love confrontation, but I do not shy away from confrontation. I'm probably maybe I was already that person. That's why I joined the military so I can be okay with yelling at people and not get in trouble. But it is what it is. Cause I have no problem just going up and just yelling at someone. Because that's what they train you to do. But at the same time, you have that sense of I just, you're not listening to me. You're gonna fucking hear me one way or another. I can go on and on about this shit, man. So for those that thinking about joining the military or have family members in the military or who were in the military, whatever the case may be, really pay attention, man. Really pay attention to the details, the day-to-day things, the, the, the you know, them being in your life. You have no privacy. You have no privacy. Oh, Hey, uh, I seen you out there, uh, for example, I remember, I remember being at work and one of my close friends that I love dearly, I remember being at work with her and, and nothing, 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 just fucking talking, working alongside her the same manner in which I worked along everyone else in there. I'm the NCO on shift, she's a younger uh, airman, and then all of a sudden, I get in trouble because they're saying, hey, Sergeant Jackson, uh, we know you and so-and-so are, are a little too close, and someone said that y'all are grabbing each other ass at work. I'm like, wow, what the fuck? This is another invasion of privacy story. And But you know what? It was also my fault because I told everybody at work I was married. I just was just with my ex-wife. I just didn't want to explain the story that I'm divorced, but I got back with my ex-wife because 
I don't need to explain shit to nobody. But guess what? You got to explain shit to fucking people. <laughs> because of shit like that, someone at work will try to get you in trouble because they're jealous over some stupid shit that has nothing to fucking do with you. It has nothing to do with me. I remember going off, I'm like, hey, what the fuck? I'm like, who the fuck is, I'm like, my, everybody need to mind their fucking business. I remember, sorry, I'm cussing at, I'm cussing and shit while I'm talking and everything. And I was like, oh, Sergeant Jackson, you know, well, this and that. I'm like, no, nah, man, fuck that. I was like, I'm not even married anyways. Ha ha, dumb fucks. So now what? I'm not even married. I've been divorced. And I kind of explained that situation. And I remember telling somebody, my superior, my supervisor, something like, I was like, it's y'all job to look into to see if I'm actually married or not. That's y'all job. Because I knew as an NCO that we posted. That's the thing. You have to look into. You have to know whether someone's married or not. You have to know whether, they have, whether or not they have dependents. Whether or not they have fucking children. Right? You, you can <laughs> I have to write down on paper in the event that I have to get deployed or I have to go away from training or something immediately, who is going to take care of my children? And I have to create a fucking plan and type that shit up and give and send it off to someone in an email for someone to not really look over that shit. And I had to go off and get certain things signed by the doctors and stuff like that. Look, do you have no fucking privacy? You everything everything that you every decision you're trying to make, the shit that you're trying to do in your life, someone at work or someone within the military chain of command has to fucking know about. They don't tell you this shit. And you know what? Fuck it. People are gonna see, uh, are gonna keep joining. Why? Cause we need a military. Why? Cause we don't. <laughs> just, just business. It's just business. They just need some fucking former employee, uh, some type of employee to do certain little things. But don't worry, cause they're gonna automate all that shit. They're gonna replace all of us with robots, and then we gotta worry about shit at all. So whatever. Fuck it. So until next time.